Good morning everybody. So, another day, another Etappe stage of the Jura Hörwerk, Jura Crest Trail. Behind me, I'm just on the outskirts of uh, Sainte Croix. Today is Etappe, 18 kilometers, about 800 meters of elevation, 1200 of, uh, meters of descent. So yeah, a little bit windy, a little bit chilly, variable weather conditions, but all part of the adventure. So today I'm going from Santa Croix down to um, uh, Belay, and then from Belay I'm just going to add an additional couple of kilometers to get down to the train at Lede. So. Fingers crossed, unlike the last couple of etappes, we don't run into too much forestry work. So, yeah, fingers crossed for that. And, uh, yeah, let's get to it. Well, it happened again. Behind me, you can see the devastation of forestry work. But what they've done to the path, here's the front. So, uh, yeah, you can definitely see it's gonna be a little bit muddy for the next little bit. So yeah, here goes. Um, fingers crossed I do not face plant because that wouldn't be fun, but oh well, if it happens, it happens, if it doesn't, happy days. Okay, so 
after checking the height profile of the little ridge that I need to go up. Reminds me very much of the first mountain or the first stage of the Chasseral with all those false little summits. So yeah, I don't think it's going to be as bad, but yeah, we'll see. But other than that, happy days. Okay, so just gonna take a moment to check out this viewpoint because the Uda Hervag continues off. I'm looking down the path, continues off to my right that way. However, there's a viewpoint here, which I'm gonna take a slight detour to, bringing you along with me, of course, to uh, have a little look, see, see what it is. It's a little bit windy, but it's a southwesterly, which is nice. It means it's warm air. Might mean rain, but at least it's not uh, blowing against me, uh, blowing behind me, because that wouldn't be too fun. Because I've just seen some of the cliffs that I need to walk up, which you will see momentarily after we see this view. So here we go. Three, two, one. So yeah, there we have it. There's the view. There's the cliffs. And yeah. Time to take a couple of uh, photos and then uh, keep pressing on because the highest point of this hike is on the top of the cliffs way over there. So yeah, I have all of that that I need to hike. And to be honest, I am super happy that it hasn't snowed because one of my concerns was potentially getting lost in the snow, losing the path like I did last time, and yeah. And yes, I can hear some forestry work, but the good news is it's coming from down that way. Sorry, down that way, rather than over that way. So, yeah. Right, paparazzi time, and then it is time to get moving.
Okay, so here is um, something of interest. This is the uh, Cave Noir. So yeah, as you can tell by the sign, dangerous passage. It is very, very exposed. When I mean, you're practically on the cliff edge there at that point, and I think it's like a 60 meter drop, give or take. Um, yeah, quite high up, but because I'm on my own, I do not have climbing gear, I, and I don't have gear for spelunking. I mean, I have a head torch, but I don't have any headwear, like a helmet or anything, so yeah. I'm just going to continue on the standard path this way, where it's a little bit safer, I think. So yeah. Okay, so progress is progressing progressively as usual, more or less as usual. Um, yeah, so as you can probably guess, I've made it to the top of the first climb, a nice 500 meters or so. I've only got another 300 to go uh, for the rest of the hike now, until the second ascent is predominantly downhill. So, yeah covered the first quarter. Now we've got, I think, seven kilometers of downhill, three kilometers of up, hill gently, and then, yeah, downhill the rest of the way to Belay. Here's something really cool. Yeah, nice little uh, little grotto. So yeah, um, funnily enough, unexpectedly, I have bumped into uh, a few people. Well, not bumped into them, but uh, they, we met on the trail, and um, yeah, a couple of people doing some speed hiking, and I didn't see. I didn't, I wasn't in too close contact with the others, but there were three, uh, what looked to be a family going off doing some rock climbing on some of the cliffs here, so, yeah.
Well, it wouldn't be a hike on the Jura Hörwag, Jura Crest Trail, without some kind of defensive fortification. Again. Yeah, you can see here. I would put uh, some kind of gate through here to block access. And as usual, there is a bunker, which is uh, just over here. Looks like it's been graffitied a bit. Just up here, once again, you can see the big steel door for the anti-personnel, uh, the anti-materiel weapon system. I can see a guard post and yeah, it looks to be quite a big one actually. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna get too close to it just because uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it's been in use for a long time, at least. I'm guessing just 20 years, just based on the tree growth around it. Um, also, considering the fact that the um, uh, border uh, guard brigades were all uh, disbanded in, in sort of the 90s, so 80s and 90s, so yeah. Yeah, just uh, that, and then, no. We keep going straight ahead down that way for a little bit on the trail. So yeah, that's that. Well, just found these stairs on the side of the road here. And, well, knowing what I know, this might be another point of interest. Let's have a little look-see, see if we can find something. Ooh, so there is. But, unfortunately, it's closed. Looks like that thing hasn't been opened in a while. So, yeah. There's another something-something over there. And earlier I did find a couple other something somethings, but I don't exactly know what those something somethings were. They were something, but uh, at the moment they're an unknown unknown. No, they're a known unknown, because I know they're there, I just don't know what they are. So yeah, not long to go now. I mean, this is definitely one of the shorter, shorter etapas stages but it is a nice little difference to the attempted long one of last time so yeah onwards Please ignore the fur, and yes, yeah, much better. Right, so, this one is a little bit defaced, but we are again approaching another pillbox. So we'll try and get the GoPro out of the way a little bit, just to shield it from the wind. So yeah, with this one, oh, this one is in rough shape, this, yeah. This one's old, old, old. But uh, yeah, without much ado, here we are, the pillbox. So I am taking a little bit of a detour to get here. But uh, yeah, I'm actually in a rather good nick. So 
you can clearly see you've got a point for your anti-infantry weapon and then two anti-materiel weapons and to be honest the viewpoint the viewpoint here is phenomenal I mean big open stretch of land I mean that road that I just walked down easy pickings if you're an armoured vehicle or infantry yeah this mm. you can even see uh, the degrading of the concrete steel reinforcement there should be oh there's another point just here defending this side of the valley Let's see if there's anything on the back is it? Oh no, that one's sealed off. But uh, yeah, very, very interesting. So I mean, you can clearly see that this, even on the other side, probably has another anti-infantry position. I mean, you'd probably have even one or two men at the back to defend that just in case, but I mean, very, very well defended. I mean, even the path running down there where I need to go, any kind of vehicle, I mean, you've, you've pretty much, you're, you're in a V because the turn, the apex is just there. Yeah, would have been very, very difficult the only thing I would say is this one is rather open, but I mean, if you got past the, this one's probably, guessing, probably a last resort, because if the one further up the road that way didn't, uh, didn't stop, well, this would probably be it. But yeah, that's enough of my, uh... oh, and the, I've just spotted another one on the other side of the valley, but uh, yeah. I don't think that one is on our route, but effectively, I mean, with artillery and everything, this is it. So yeah.
Okay, so the next few hundred meters of elevation gain. Fine, uh, this is the second climb of the day and fingers crossed, well, not fingers crossed, I know it is the last one, but uh, yeah. Second climb of the day. It's now a little bit rainy as well. Happy days. Couldn't wish for anything more. So yeah, time to focus more on walking and less on chatting. So, more or less at the top of La Souchet, which is the second pass that I've just crossed, as you've seen. And um, yeah, it's all the way downhill now to uh, Belay, and then from Boulay, uh, two kilometers down to La Day, where I will catch the train home. So yeah, that is the plan. Oh wow, that is quite the descent. So yeah. All right, just yeah, check out this view because it is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I can see uh, Mürtensee, Neuburgersee, and Genfersee in this next shot. So yeah. So that there. Neuenburgersee uh, Just beyond that in the distance there, I don't even know if my camera can pick it up, but uh, is Mürtensee And then Way off over there, that big expanse is Genfersee And then somewhere along that shoreline is my destination of Mion So yeah, almost made it to the end. I genuinely cannot believe that this journey is almost over. I am, yeah, what is that? Okay, I've just seen an animal in the field below me. I don't know if they're goats or if they're sheep or what, but we'll have a look, see when we get to it. But yeah, the journey's not over yet. I've still got four stages left of the Jurahurvag to complete, so yeah. Let's get cracking. also known as the uh, chamois so um, yeah I don't want to speak too loudly which is why I'm moving a little bit slower because I don't want to disturb them too much because they are a type of goat 
and goat like sheep are in lambing season at the minute and I want to try and reduce the stress of the animal as much as possible so it's nice slow and steady all the way through the good news is is the wind is blowing towards me so they're not going to be able to smell me which is good so yeah that's pretty cool I mean I've seen Steinbock, Gemse, a few other bits and pieces so yeah all good uh, right that was most definitely I mean I knew to expect it just didn't expect it to be that bad so forgive me for looking a little bit like the green arrow but uh, yeah um, where was I yeah definitely picked up a little a smidgen of hail but nothing too major so yeah I think for the time being as I do need a little bit of a warmer layer I'm keeping Vortex on so yeah Oh well, it's all part of the fun and the adventure. Well, so one thing, this section of the trail is okay. I mean, there's a few bits of it, things of interest. The view is not the best, but it's nice. Definitely it's a nice little change from sort of all the ups and downs I've had fairly recently. In the Jura Hervag, not in life, life has been fairly stable. Um, so yeah. Um, it's a 
fun trail, not at this section anyway, not gonna lie. Um, seeing the uh, pillboxes sort of dotted all over the place is cool because it's all like, ooh, dragon's teeth. And then I like to think, right, where are the pillboxes? And well, if I can't see them, well, they're in the trees. And uh, yeah. And it's slightly drizzling again, so the weather forecast did say one to two millimeters of rain. So yeah, it's not uh, not too bad. Could be worse. Could always be worse. Tomorrow though is meant to be absolutely sunny, so without a shadow of a doubt, I am 80-20 looking at uh, heading out again. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. So, that big cliff behind me there is um, it's in France. Because there is a big ski area up there. But, um, yeah, I, I, I was looking at it on the topo map on my phone. I was just thinking, okay, that's fairly cool. Why can't I zoom in? And then I remembered, oh yeah, it's because there's a big red line demarking the border there. So, yeah. That's that, and um, yeah, that's that. So pretty cool, pretty interesting. I am just on the outskirts of Belay now. Um, I have missed the 25 past bus. I could have ran for it, but I'm not doing that. Um, mainly because it is a new area, um, somewhere I've never been. I don't know the path and I'd rather take it nice and easy, get home an hour later than um, rush, injure myself and well, wreck my summer. So yeah, that's that. Okay, so behind me, just over there, it, yeah, just there is uh, Belay, and with a lot less time than I would have liked, hence why I didn't film this last section, and a bit of a heavy intensive cardio workout, I have made it to the train station at Le Day which is already two kilometers in to the next top, uh, top uh, 13, stage 13. So yeah, without much further ado, here it is. So yeah, now it's home. Get that kebab, because I think I've more than earned it. And yeah. Get ready for my next adventure. So, yeah, thank you for watching this far. Thank you for watching my adventures, and uh, yeah, catch you on the next one.